This year you will suffer no loss. Gap TV, RCC Dubai TV channel. To butter a man's bread, he gives him a good wife. A good wife is good. A good wife is good. If there's any parents here listening to me tonight, if there's a prayer you need to pray every day for your children, is that they don't miss it in the area of marriage. Because <laughs> if someone misses it in the area of marriage, over 90% of the person's life is, will be a struggle, I'm telling you. And as a parent, you can't have a great evening. So you need to pray about that. After their salvation, that's the next thing you need to pray about. In the confine of the time that I have tonight, I want to share with you on the making of kings and queens. That's the theme I have been given. And my foundational scripture is in the book of Esther, chapter 2. I want to read one verse, verse 12. Esther, chapter 2, and verse 12. The Bible says that now, when every maid's turn was, to, was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished. To wait six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. As I teach tonight, I'm going to be speaking on you know, three various sections of a king or a queen's life. I'm going to be talking about the selection. I'm going to be talking about the coronation. And I'm going to be talking about the reigning. We see a queen here that is being or about to be selected. Talking about the person of Esther. You know the story very well. Vashti had missed destiny. Vashti had forgotten that she was a queen because her husband was a king. In case you are married here tonight, listen and listen to me very carefully. Don't ever get to a level in your life as a married woman when you start disrespecting and dishonoring your husband, no matter the anointing that you carry, no matter the grace on your life, no matter the wealth you have. I don't care. Even if you are better than your husband, it does not matter. In the institution of marriage, there is order, absolute order. And life is not governed by miracles, it is governed by principles. And one of the greatest principles that govern the planet Earth is found in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 22. While the earth remains, does the earth remain? Yes. Seed, time, and harvest is a cycle. If you don't want to reap it, do not sow it. As a man, don't marry a woman that cannot honor and respect you. It's going to tell later. Don't marry a man that cannot respect you as a woman and vice versa. Vashti, because it's, well, let me not jump the queue. Vashti, in her own situation, was a queen because her husband was a king. Unlike, for instance, the present day Queen Elizabeth. She's not a queen because her husband is a king. Let me break it down a little. Talking about ministry, for instance, there are three kinds of women in ministry. Number one, we have called women that are married to chosen men. E.G. Joyce Mayer. She's called. Her husband is not the called. I'm sure that is not likely to happen in Africa. They will have helped God to call the husband. How can a woman be called and the, wife, the husband will not be called? But look at that man. He's so successful. He is the secret behind Jasmine. He is her life's destiny administrator. He's so secure in his identity and in his destiny. And I'm sure when we get to heaven, Dave is going to receive, Dave Mayer, is going to receive an applause for allowing that woman to be who she is. So you have the called woman that is married to the chosen woman. Number two, you have the chosen woman that is married to the called man. For example, Oretha Hagen. Her husband is, was called. But you, you notice that she was in the, you know, behind the scene ministry. One day, many years ago, I saw a very beautiful magazine. And the cover was Oretha Hagen. That's Kenneth Hagen's senior's wife. 
And I read that she had seen her fourth generation. I put that magazine on my head and I prayed some dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers. I really prayed. She was a chosen woman, but she was married to a called man. And she allowed the man fulfill his destiny. Can I pause here to quickly celebrate my husband? Even though the two of us fall into the third category that I'm going to mention, my husband has given me space and place in life. And these are the two major things every married man must give his wife. Any man that doesn't allow his wife to shine is a coward. He's a coward. You must be secure in your own calling and in your own skin as a man. And don't allow your wife to die in the kitchen. Don't marry a man that can only afford the price of your bag and not the price of your assignments. Don't marry a man that is competitively jealous of what you carry. Don't marry a man that doesn't believe in you. Some journalists approached my husband recently and said, your wife is so popular. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you feel somehow? My husband said, excuse me, please, can you tell me her name? Oh, Funka Felix Adejumo. In case you don't realize it, I am the Felix Adejumo. I am a pastor and I'm very comfortable in my skin and in my calling. Have you not even realized it? That when we play chess, it is the queen that moves around. Let your spouse shine. If God has given him or her the grace. Love your spouse enough to let them fulfill their destiny. It doesn't reduce you. Close one eye in prayer when you are about to marry. And open the other one in watching. Look very well before you marry. Don't marry a coward. Don't marry a visionless person. They say, oh, love is blind. I agree, but marriage is the eye opener. Look very well before you marry. It's not enough for the man to buy you a bag. Can he pay the price for you to fulfill your destiny? It's a very important question. So that takes me to the third kind of women. The called married to the called. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Felix and Funke Adejumu. You have the chosen married to the called. You have the called married to the chosen. And then you have the called married to the called. Not every pastor's wife is a called woman. And that's why some of you put your pastor's wives in difficult position because you want them to be what they were not called to be. She may be called to stand by the man. That was what I was called to do. Take preaching from me. Take anything from me. Just let me be Mrs. Adejum. About 30 years ago, I said to God in the place of prayer, Father, I am going to stand so solidly by Felix Adejumo. If he fails, hold me responsible. The covenant relationship. I am called to him. Your pastor's wife may be called to your pastor and nothing else. So if she's not preaching and fire is coming, don't crucify her. If she's not doing what you want, all the gym gym, don't crucify her. It is God that calls and chooses. Hebrews chapter 5, beginning from verse 1. Even the high priest is taken from among men. And no man, verse 4, taketh this honor unto himself. So understand this. I was talking about the queen. We're talking about Vashti, who was a chosen queen married to a called king unlike the present queen of England. It is her husband that is privileged to be her husband. 
and not the other way around. Most times it is the, the woman that feels privileged. And that was the situation with Vashti. She was hosting the women's fellowship. She did not realize or she had forgotten that she was a queen because the man was a king. So the man sent for her and she wouldn't budge. Someone says, oh, the man must have been drunk. She didn't want to display. I don't care. Submission in marriage is not subjugation. But listen to me. It is strength put under control. But if you don't have something to submit, then your submission is rubbish. See, there's one man in a church, very, very humble. Ah, that man, although he's poor, oh, very. What else will a poor man be? What else? So, when we talk about submission, you have something that you give it, you submit it, you give it. That's why every woman, married, single, divorced, separated, you must be empowered. We've left the level of woman being full-time housewife. It is full-time suffering, PLC. Do something with your life. Even if, it's, even if you're a full-time housewife, do something with your life. Write a book. Sell pure water. Do something from your car boot. But all this waiting until your husband doles out money, you're a disgrace to woman who do. It wasn't her. That wasn't her case. So the man sent for her and she wouldn't come. She made a lifetime mistake and people, not her husband, read the book of Esther chapter 1 very well. People demoted her. People dethroned her. The memocans of life. I'll get there if I still have the time. Because, listen to the next statement I'm about to make. No king enthrones himself. You need people. I'm going to touch on that if I have the time. You need people. It wasn't her husband that dethroned her. It was the people. After she dethroned, after all, some of us have been married 30 something years. Some of us are here married. Sometimes your husband sends for you. You're upstairs. The man says, come down. I say, darling, I'm tired. I'm tired. He doesn't divorce you because of that. So you could tell that there was more to this. The people came and said, king, excuse me, what the queen has done? Blah, 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 blah. And they began to instigate the man. And hear me, there was nobody. Seven people spoke against her. Not one person spoke in her defense. So that takes me to this next thing. As you are rising, be careful. Treat people well. If you're a Mordecai, treat your Esther very well. Because you don't know what anybody can become tomorrow. My life is a lesson to me to treat people well. I was jokingly telling your protocol people when they come around and they kneel down, you kneel down to greet. Well, that, that's still okay because it's a cultural thing. But then you remain on your knees talking to me. I'm a fellow human being. Excuse me, don't kill me. Even God, we don't kneel down talking to him every day. It's a bad thing. And we should remove it from Christianity. It's not good. It's not biblical. It's wrong. It's very wrong. People love you. They want to do it. Tell them, get up. Get up. Please, let's not introduce idol worship into Christianity. It's not good. I'm sorry if I have to correct them. I hope having said it now, they will stop it. Say, so please don't kneel down to talk to me. I am a fellow human being. No, even God will stand up to talk to him. We lie down, we prostrate, we kneel. So, please, it's bad. Let's stop it. I don't know what took me to that. It must have been the Holy Spirit. She refused to come down and she was demoted. So, be careful. When God lifts your head, be careful. All this misbehaving because God just brought you up from nothing. There are two kinds of people at the top. According to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, he raises the poor from the dust and the beggar from the dungheel and makes them to sit among princes. So, at the top, number one, you have the princes. Number two, you have the raised. How they worship God will let you know who they are. When you see some people, the way they worship God, God will be asking the archangels, what is he saying? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> when people like me, that remember where God took me home. Baba, Jesus, Olubala. 
I'm grateful. I am the leper that you healed. The man you saved, the one you helped, has come to worship you. If this place, this floor, were to be tiles, and you are walking on it, and you are not careful, and when the place was going to be built, your senior pastor took offering. And your money was part of it. The floor will not remember that your money was part of it. Too. So when you are walking, tread gently. Be careful. Don't wait for God to remind you of where he picked you from. Be grateful. Consciously. And intentionally. Be grateful. Only great fools are ungrateful. Be grateful. In my village, they say, she wants to hit your body on the ground, then become proud. Nobody could speak on her behalf. Everybody was against her. Have you forgotten Mrs. Neyman? One little tiny girl, one maid, said, there is a prophet. I have a feeling she must have been treating that girl very well. But nobody could stand in the gap for Vashti. Everybody. And she was removed. So that's where our story begins. Because, hear this. Hear this. When somebody is messing up, another person is warming up. Life does not allow for vacuum. Be careful. That was what God told Saul. I found your neighbor that is better. Anytime God wants to replace a man, he doesn't go foul. He looks for his neighbor that is better so that you'll be reminded that I am God. I do what I like and I like what you do. What I do. That's God. So, treat gently. So there was a call, there was a promo, there was a competition, whatever. And Esther and some other virgins will come. I'm talking about selection. Tonight, you have asked me to talk about the making of kings and queens. And we're looking at the process. We're looking at the selection. So many of them were brought. And the Bible says, in that Esther chapter 2 verse 12, that for about one year, the process of elimination, of admission, of qualification, and disqualification was going on. It was divided into two. Six months of oil of myrrh and six months of sweet oil. I want to spend a few minutes on both tonight. If I can't get to the other things, that's fine. Because we're really talking about the making. Six months of the oil of myrrh. You remember when Jesus Christ was born and the wise men came? He was presented with gold, with frankincense, and with myrrh. Gold was talking about his divinity. Frankincense was talking about his humanity and the man was talking about the pains that he would go through on the cross of Calvary. No king or queen, no leader that will last can ever be made without his or her own experience of the man. And I can spend hours on that. If you are going to last, you will be processed. This building, for instance, you cannot compare it with my boys' quarters at home. In quality, in depth, the depth of the foundation, because of the weight that is carrying. My boys' quarters is just four bed, four rooms. We are maybe the driver or whatever. When we travel late, when they stay. Four rooms and suites. But look at the pillars there. 
look at it. For this property to be standing, let the structural engineer tell you the depth. Our headquarters church in Akure, we United States of Akure actually, you know, sits about 7,000, 5,000, 7,000 people. We have 10 churches in the city, but this is the headquarter church. We had pulled it down twice because of space crisis, but the one that is currently there has, there's no pillar in the middle, but it has four pillars. It's because I don't have any other name. That's why I call them pillars. Pastor Adikoki, when we were going to do the foundation, sir, each pillar, we used 1,000 bags of cement. I didn't say the building. I said the pillar, the foundation of the pillar. 1,000. Bags of cement. That property, there are some portions of it that we didn't mix the water and we didn't mix the cement and sand with water. No, there was already water there. Come and see bank managers who were carrying whatever. Just because of water. Just to solidify it. What are you going through? It is because of where you are going to. The man walked out on me. It's because of the future. Some people did not belong to your future. Let them go. Some of you are crying over spilled milk. You better be careful. There was only one Boaz. Thank God that upper left. Because she would have been the one to marry the man. Oh, you don't know. She was a senior wife. First Samuel chapter 1, the Bible tells me that there was a man called Elkanah who had two wives. The name of the one was Anna and the other Penina. So that's the order. So if you go to Ruth chapter 1, the name of the first wife was Opa and the, sec- the other Ruth. And there was only one Boaz in the future. So who left you? Stop resurrecting what God is trying to kill. Let him go. Let her go. Some people can never be comfortable with your future. So stop begging them to leave. Leave them. Some of you, you are the reason why you are not yet in your next level. Because you are trying to drag the dead. Bury your dead from before your eyes. So you can beat your boars that is waiting for you. What you are going to, T-O, will be determined by what you go through. Oh, God's servant was talking about me having a safe haven for mothers, having an orphanage, blah, blah, blah. I've been through some stuff in life. So I know what it means to suffer. I wasn't born with a silver, in fact, I wasn't born with any spoon. So when the hospital was opened, on Wednesday, see what I did. I had bought spoons because all our grandkids were born in the U.S. And I saw what they did in, that, in those hospitals. So I bought spoons for each child that would be born in that hospital. I've made the whatever, whatever. I was born at Carrie's Life Hospital, National State. And then I wrote, I was born at Carrie's Life Hospital with a silver spoon in my mouth. Every child that will be born has our first gift and a Bible for them. Whether you are a Muslim or not, this is Jesus, eh? You must. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you came to my hospital, so by force, by fire, you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I've been through stuff. When I was born, people gathered to weep for my father. A girl, what will she become? Hear what my father tells me regularly. You are better than seven sons. What you are going through may be a pointer to your assignment. Instead of throwing a pity party and crying every night because of a man that left you five years ago, why don't you bring lemonade out of your lemon? 
Why don't you turn your ashes to beauty? Why don't you start a ministry, a fellowship for women that are in your situation? Why don't you start an online prayer meeting? Why don't you do something? Thank you. Why don't you do something about your experience? I was the head girl in my secondary school. For two weeks, I wouldn't be able to go to school because of less than one dollar. So now that God has blessed me, I've even lost count of how many kids I'm sponsoring in school. A young boy was brought to me some time ago and they said I needed to pray for him. He wasn't doing well in school. By the time he wasn't, he's an undergraduate. By the time I interacted with him, I discovered that the boy was hungry. He was hungry. So I started blessing him every month. My God, I need to show you my phone. The kind of prayers that boy sent to me every month. Oh Lord. So refreshing. So refreshing. I've been there. So I know it. That's my treasure floor. That's my oil of mer. Somebody walked up to me in England recently, some time ago, after I finished preaching, you know, I had sweated, and she said, give me the handkerchief. I claim all the grace of God upon your life. I, I said, <laughs> she said, ma, please pray, pray, pray. I said, can we hold our hands? I said, father, every pain I've ever been through in my life, every trouble I've ever, she said, oh, excuse me, ma. I said, yes. Stop envying your man of God. So I want to be like Pastor Adigo. Okay, let him open his mouth and tell you stories. Stop envying your mama. I wrote a book. I've written 81 books by God's grace. Published them. My books are on Amazon. I hardly carry them around now. So you can, you can buy on Amazon. One of, the, one of my books that I love most is I Am the Pastor's Wife. It's a four chapter book. Chapter one, they are God. Chapter two, they are me. Chapter three, my dear husband. Chapter four, they are congregation members. <laughs> is that chapter four I love most? I said, your grandma may be better than my own, no, but I am the pastor's wife. You may have a better background, but God didn't choose you. It's me he chose. So you better honor me. And not just your pastor. Honor me as the pastor. Because some of you, when you see daddy, daddy, we bless God for you, sir. We thank God, sir. You are the Elijah of our time. We are grateful to you. <laughs> when you see your pastor, so I bless you. Because some of you, you are angry that we are married to the men you will give anything to sleep with. Remember the ministry was a few months old. One lady said that I didn't fit my husband. That I wasn't beautiful. True, true. Not that time I wasn't. <laughs> Mommy, I think, okay. You know, uh, <clears throat> You know, when you first start ministry, you know she can tell you, you know what you go through. So somebody saw me sometime and I said, ah, ah, you are now light in complexion. Ah, ah, are you bitch? I said, ah, no. It's my true color that is now showing. <laughs> ah, it was poverty that darkened me before. <laughs> it's true color that is showing. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> ah, and I was... Oh, I was both timid and rascally when the ministry first started. You know, it wasn't something I wanted to do. I didn't want to be a pastor's wife. I never wanted, I wanted a private life. But that day I was so upset. When that girl said I didn't fit my husband, I said, I may not be fine, but I know the person where I find pass. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, may God lift your head. May God give you miracles that will terminate insults. May God put in your hand the things that you need to reply your critics. Let your amen be very loud. Take your seat. I don't know how many more minutes I have. I've even... <laughs> ah, thank you, sir. Well, I won't, I won't get... But you see, that oil of my... Thank you, ma. That oil of ma. <laughs> okay, ma. You know, 
Whatever you are going through is part of the process. It is the making of the queen. It is the making of the king. So don't give up. Everything that comes your way as a child of God is father filtered. God has filtered it. He knows you can bear it. You may cry. It's your threshing floor. Mm. Sometimes people see you in your final stage, in your mid state, with your makeup, everything. But they have no idea what you've been through. I remember when the ministry first started, my husband, he did it. He had only one suit. And then I would follow him to where the Hausa boys used to sell suits. And I would stand on the road while he would be fitting the suits. Did I say suit? No, coat. Yes, coat. Yes, coat. And the church members would be passing. Ah, Sister Funke, how are you doing? I said, I'm blessed. Ah, what are you doing here? I'm waiting for somebody. <laughs> Is my husband not somebody? And my husband would wave so I could see whether I said, no, don't. don't, don't, don't. <laughs> and when the coast was clear, I would call him. <laughs> he knew, now you can come out. So I told some ladies in church some time ago. I said, you know, once in a while, I just jump into the car. I love range. I drive range, range rover. I said, don't envy me now that I'm driving a Range Rover. Where were you when I was helping my husband push his Volkswagen five colors? Where were you? I said, if you envy me, now you are a witch. Because the Bible says, if I suffer with him, I will reign with him. So let me reign. Stop envying pastor's wives. Some of you came where the ministry was already. We had microphone, had everything. And you are still, you are still here criticizing your pastor's wife. Which one should we even do as pastor's wife? If you are a very quiet, reserved, just doing your own thing, pastor's wife, hey, they will say the day pastor went to market, he no carry I go. Which kind of pastor's wife be this? If you are a Jim Jim one, you have a, the call of God upon your life, you say, ah, that's a pastor's wife. Ah, very manipulative. Ah, Jezebel. So what should we do? Some of you, your children can run from anywhere in church, but our own. Say, Pastor's wife, see your, see your child. As if our children drop from heaven. Where are we safe? <laughs> Praise God. Yes, ma. The oil of ma. Six months. Some of you, you are crying, God is enough. You need it. Now I know how to abound down to our base. Now I know what it means. This mouth you are looking at has drunk all kinds of waters because of the gospel before. All kinds. I was telling mommy Adeguke yesterday, I've slept inside the pastor's office before. I went there to preach. And there was no hotel. No hotel. And I needed, the people needed to hear the gospel. Mommy Adeguke and I were the only speakers. in Abeokuta. We finished around the night. I couldn't go back to Akura. Mommy said, Funke, she was the one that gave me water to even drink. Okay, me, I'm going back to the camp. You know, my own is not far. My voice, I had lost it. But God was testing me. Some of you, you cannot go through nothing. I don't like the way the choir leader talked to me. Let me tell you a true personal story. My own junior sister, she lived with me for 11 years. Served me with all her life. And God helped my husband and I to, to give her a befitting, correct wedding. So we expected that she would be pregnant. First year, second year. One day I went to the Lord in prayers. I said, Lord, Lola is not pregnant. What's happening? She served me. And it's one of your graces on my life. People are getting blessed. They are getting pregnant. And hear what God said to me. Every time the angel brought her babies, she was not in church. I said, what? Lola is always in church. The Lord said, the angels have been instructed not to bring her children to the main service, but to choir rehearsals on Thursdays. My sister left the choir because she thought she had waited and waited. She was discouraged, so she left the choir. So when you come for choir rehearsal, don't think God is not watching. That drum that you are beating and nobody's hands, you know, appreciating you. Sometimes you even sing, nobody claps for you. Don't worry. The big boss is in heaven. And is a rewarder. And they prove that God rewards. God rewards. Some of us, God needs to prune us 
and he uses only two things so pain and people so that person that misbehaved is part of the process you're going to be enthroned you're going somewhere so some things must leave you for instance you are hot tempered quick tempered god will allow some things your housemaid or your mother-in-law one sister-in-law to just be bringing out the beast in you just did the, the, the devil send you what what so that when you get there you will know what we call palace manners kings don't get angry anyhow a king is a patriarch a queen is a matriarch you are like the sea where everything flows if you want to get angry things will be will be destroyed this will be destroyed so god trains you and polishes you that's your threshing floor and until you pass that exam he won't take you to the next level that's what god does he uses pain and he uses people but don't forget that it wasn't just six months of myrrh it was also six months of sweet oil frankincense and that brings us to the balance your life should not be a trash bag for the devil so don't sit there and be saying why the rivers of babylon they have said that we must always no 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 sometimes you need to discern that this is not god this is the devil trying to afflict you and you must re revolt and say satan no packing no stopping no waiting keep moving you can't touch my life the bible says answer a fool then answer not a fool so you must know where to discern between the two there is one person you must never meet in your life please my sister come one person you can meet every other person but you must never meet this one person you're so beautiful who is this person that you must never meet the person you should have become I read in the book some time ago that many years ago Billy Graham was preaching. That's one of the most I don't even know how to qualify that man. One of the holiest men of God in America. America, Sodom and Gomorrah. For them to say that one man is holy. You know that the man was really truly holy. That man was truly a kingdom ambassador. But while he was preaching this day, he was missing his notes. He wants to call the book of Daniel, he will call the book of Matthew. He will look in one direction and call. So the wife noticed. After he was done preaching, the wife said to him, Honey, I noticed you were looking in a particular direction and you were missing your lines. What happened? Hear what Bill said. I suddenly noticed a lady in the audience. That was the lady that didn't agree to marry me because she said I didn't have a future. Mrs. Billy Graham stood up, adjusted her dress. <laughs> By this time, protocols had stood up. She walked straight to the woman and said, Hi, lady. Thank you for saying no to my husband. See what I will have missed. You must never miss the, meet the person you should have been. Therefore, allow God to prune you so that you will not be denied and deprived of your throne and replaced powerful word you must allow god to prune you there are things that must not follow you to the next level some of you you talk too much now listen men listen very well this is a proved fact or proven fact that an average woman speaks 250,000 words per day. Minimum. An average man speaks maximum 25,000. Maximum. So that you are even a woman is enough a prayer point in that area if you are now very tall captive and it's not that maybe you are in ministry or you are you know 
It's just choo 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 Out of the multitude of what they are wanted not saying. That's what the Bible says. You think I didn't say a correct thing? Look at the book of Genesis chapter 3. When the devil approached the woman as a serpent, he spoke 14 words. When the woman replied, she replied with 44. Go and count it. King James' version. When you get to 44 words, verse 14. So some of you, God knows you are too talkative. You talk, talk, talk until when you don't know what to say again, you start talking about your life. Hmm. Talking about yourself, talk questions. They ask you one question, you will reply with 15 answers. Where are you from? Okra local government of Odo State in Nigeria, of Africa, of the world, very close to what? After some time, when people see your number, they won't pick your call. Particularly mentors and great people. And you know, when God wants to take you to the top, he links you with the people that are at the top or the people that are on their way to the top. So if your attitude makes them not to have contact with you and access is the greatest gift anybody can give to you, then, so talking too much, your talk, Maybe that's your own that God is using sandpaper. Some of it is in marriage. You. Your wife may be your sandpaper. Your husband may be your sandpaper. I told some men two Sundays ago in Abuja. It was Father's Day. Was it last Sunday? The other Sunday, yes. I said, when your wife calls you, hello dear, where are you say, Stop calling me! When did you become a monitoring spirit? <laughs> Leave me alone. I said, the day you will get lost. The day you'll be kidnapped. Nobody will call you. Because they say, ah, if you call him now, he's going to shout. They will have taken you to Afghanistan before they remember. <laughs> when people are in your life, that is your brake system. Any car that doesn't have a brake system will be prone to accidents. You must be accountable. And there's no institution at the institution of marriage, where your Christianity will be tried. When you get married, you move from patience to endurance. From endurance to long suffering. That's why marriage is not for boys and girls. Please let me know when I have just 10 more minutes. Okay. May you not meet the person you should have been. That's your amen is not good enough. Okay. I've been talking about this selection. Even if it is by birth, because some people become kings and queens by birth, like Williams, like Harry, by birth. You are also a king and a queen. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. He has made us to be kings and priests unto himself. If you are born again by birth, royal blood flows on your inside. So you've been selected. You can be a king in the political world. You can be a king in business. You can be a queen in whatever. It doesn't mean it has to be the physical throne. It does not mean you are a king, you are a priest. Just make sure you matter and you fulfill your destiny. Selection. But before you are selected, you'll be proved and pruned. God will use people. Please don't give up. The future is still very colorful. I'm going to skip the coronation because I want to speak on the third one. The coronation talks about the day of your honor, the day of your glory. In the gathering of glory, you will not be a spectator. Amen. Let your amen be very loud. Though. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 9 to chapter 10, Saul was crowned the king. He was selected when he was little in his own eyes. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, David was crowned the king. Prophet Samuel came to the house and poured oil. God said in verse 1, why are you still weeping? Mourning over Saul. I've rejected him. Go to Jesse's house. 
and you will find a man there that I, the Lord, have selected. Coronation. Everybody has it. But make sure you don't waste time. Because you have morning, afternoon, evening, and night. A time comes when some things no longer fit you. And when the devil wants to disturb your life and destiny, he delays it. He causes some spiritual go slow. He makes sure you don't get married on time or you don't have kids on time or you don't graduate on time. The devil does only three things to people's destiny. He diverts, he delays, and he destroys. But I stand upon John chapter 10 and verse number 10 because no matter how far the devil has gone, it can be stopped. So whatever is delaying or diverting or destroying your destiny, today marks the end in Jesus' name. You've been selected either by birth or by whatever and in Jesus' name, you will fulfill destiny. I want to move to the third one, you know, the coronation is about joy, you succeeding and all that. And you must know how to manage it because, for instance, the day of your wedding is one of your coronation days. The afternoon of your life begins that day. Be careful who joins you on your wedding day. Singles, be careful who lays hands on your head. In our ministry, we don't say for better, for worse. In trouble, in sickness, no. We don't say it's because the power of life and death is in your mind. It's not scriptural. This is what we say when I'm joining people or my husband or any of our pastors. I take you as my wedded husband today. In success, in health, in blessings, in biblical, whatever, whatever. And together we stand against poverty, against ill health, against that's what we do. You are what you say. So be careful what you say on your coronation day, your wedding day. Be careful what you say when God lifts your head. When God blesses you. Be careful. But I want to go straight into the palace now. I want to look at the protocol of reigning. Because many people have gone through the process, the selection, but they don't reign because of certain things. And I just want to quickly look at a few things. The first thing I want to say or talk about is your carriage as a king or as a queen. My husband was born a prince. He can decide to be the king. If not that he's a man of God, he can and if the God leads him, he can decide to be a king of his own town. My father in law died as a king at age one hundred. So I'm used to the protocols of the palace. There is a courage for kings. I think it's only in Africa and particularly in Nigeria that leaders are not prepared. Anybody just wakes up one day and then your husband has won an election and you become the wife of the president. Or the Shindra. Roll by roll. Yanka Shif, which the Shindra use, or the just. It's only in Nigeria. Your tummy can be as big as anything. You are the first lady. Who cares? You can see any grammar. Saliva can be like right there. Okay. You are the first lady. So we keep saying, Your Excellency. Because you get to a level in life when people love you too much or they fear you too much, they cannot tell you the truth. <laughs> yes, ma. Bless you, ma. Ah, we thank God, ma. One woman of God, she's in the. American army, she's a chaplain in the American army. She said one day she went for a cocktail party. That's not a true story. And then at a point, she went to use the, the bathroom. When she left the bathroom, she didn't realize that she had tucked in her top, her dress, her blouse, inside her pants, not shokoto, the pants. And she had pulled up her pants on top. Nobody, she didn't. So she came out and she was greeting everybody. Or guy in the you know top official, nobody could tell her. She said she noticed that people were looking at her, and, and she carried her ginger ale, Christian, and she was drinking. 
And that's how some, some of our leaders, that's their life. Nobody can tell them that their pants is showing. Yeah, we thank God. We thank God. And they are moving. He said until one law officer, very junior officer, walked up to him and to her and said, Excuse me, ma, your pants is showing. Everybody tiptoes around you, they worship you. I don't want that kind of a life. I don't want. You build so much protocol around you. Nobody can tell you to adjust your bra. Nobody can tell you that the way you were angry in church was bad. Who will say it? Some of you, you have not even reached anywhere. You're still the HOD of maybe choir or something. They disciplined you for two weeks. You wouldn't come to church. So the next time you are angry, we say, "Ah, it's fine, sir. (laughs) It's fine. No wonder you've not been able to rise beyond where you are. Your courage is important. It's the way you carry yourself. Kings do not walk anyhow. Queens do not behave anyhow. I'll mention the second thing very soon. There's a way. There's a courage. There's a protocol for reigning. Please carry yourself well. Carry yourself well. Number two is character. It's a character that is befitting of the palace. One lady, when she left our church, I did thanksgiving. There's some people that leave and you do thanksgiving. I was very happy. Because one day I told her, I said, how come that there's nobody you cannot abuse? And you are looking for husband. I said, let me tell you something as your pastor's wife. The way I'm looking at you, one day you are going to abuse a dead man because we stand up, slap you and go back. Character. Thank you. Oh, that's still a lot. Character. Some people will say, I've been praying. I don't know any man that can marry me. It's because of your character. Character. When you are angry, there's nothing you cannot do. When they keep secrets with you, there's nobody you cannot tell. It's better to go to Dera Market and carry a megaphone to Google announce it. Let me tell you something. Even in church, Christianity does not erase age. Know your mate. And in case you don't know who is older than you are, or not all men. You say an elderly person. There's a way. There's a way you greet. There's a way you greet. You can tell that this person is older than you are. Say hi, Popsy. This new generation. I'm warning you all. I'm warning you. Some of you can no longer kneel down to greet your parents at all. Some of you caught the phone on your parents. Hello, mommy. I don't lie. I don't run you know what happens? Heaven says, subtract 13 years from his life. Yes. Am I not speaking the scriptures? Honor thy father and mother, and it shall be well with you, and your days shall be prolonged. Dishonor them. Flip it. Just flip it. You can't, you can't honor your parents. You get angry and walk out on them, and walk out into trouble. You carry your hand, hand that you have used to, to, to sign millions, and you begin to sell rubbish on the internet against servants of God in the name of social media. He that sees in the secret is there. When they tell me that they are abusing me on the internet, I say, I don't know. I don't go there. People that people watch on TV don't watch TV. For you to be abusing me on the internet, uh uh-uh. uh. It means I am abusable. <laughs> Can I be talking about my driver now? Or my messenger? Uh, is, but what are at the back? So you give them more dust. <laughs> Abusing me. I don't care. I'm making more progress. I reply you with more progress. <laughs> be careful because judgment is coming. These men, some of these men that you are abusing on the internet... Baba Deboye prayed for some of you, for some of your mothers to, bar- to give birth to you. And that's the man you're abusing and calling all kinds of names. And the man is not saying anything. And you are typing. 
Have you ever seen Muslims do that to their imams? Whether it is Ahmadiyya or Nasfat or anything, a Muslim is a Muslim. A one correct embassy, I am on the, they put me in one, um, I won't mention the name of the embassy. I'm not talking of local embassy, correct. They put us in one committee. I meet with Muslim leaders there. They talk. If you see what goes on, pastors, some useless pastors that do rubbish. They are the one, the reason why some things are happening. But some of these imams too are terrible. But you will never tell your friends. Don't join them. Let's preserve Christianity. Youths, I'm addressing you today. Let's bring what I call home training. Let's honor these servants of God. Yes, I mean you should not kneel down and be talking to them. Yes, but that does not mean you should just be dealing with them anyhow and be doing rubbish to them. He's the most like Kenneth Copeland said, that's the greatest work on earth that has honor. Yes, there are bad people that have been good with us, but that does not mean that there are still no genuine people. Let's honor them. Character is important. Some of you, you are married or you are about to get married. Your character is the reason why the man is reconsidering. It's not money. It's not beauty. Anybody can be fine. Go to Mark. They will make up your face. You'll be looking for yourself. Who am I? <laughs> Go to Mary Kay. It's not about makeup. Charisma without character is caricature. <laughs> Behave. It starts from department. It starts from church. It starts from the bus. It starts from taxi. It starts from the toilet. Wah, 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 wah. Ah, madam, calm down. You are a Christian. Some of you, men, and you are angry. For three days, you won't eat. Oh, God, you are not hungry. You are not hungry. Let me mention just two more. Dressing. Kings don't wear just anything. You're coming to church or you're going to the office. Your dress is as short as your undies. You're now walking and pulling. Even you, you know it's, so you're pulling and pulling. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Sometimes these dresses, maybe they just, you can't even take a scarf and sit down. You sit down and be snapping picture. Anyhow, some of you, you wear transparent. When we were newly born again, if your bra shows, you know how you'll be feeling. Those of us that got born again in the 70s. Ah! But these days, you don't even wear bra. See cleavage everywhere. Like, what? What is this world turning to? What? Dressing. When you want to leave the house, look at yourself. Does this glorify God? Let me balance it. I don't believe in pneumonia scaffold. I don't believe in beret every year. Your husband is making love today. Hey, my scarf, 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 scarf. I don't believe in it. Scarf every year. Hey, hey. I don't believe in it. At 37, you look 67. You dress in a way that your husband introduces you and we think you are his, his grandmother. What? Ah, my brother should not bring you home. So let's strike a balance. Let's look good. Not religious. Some of you, the reason why your marriage has a challenge is because of the way you dress. And you are saying it's the devil. The devil says, I don't even know your address. <laughs> I don't know your address. Look good. Is it just one style every time? Is it one style every time? Bro, should I thank God for wig? <laughs> dress well. And the last thing I want to talk about, there are so many things, is your company. Kings don't flock. Better stand alone than belong to the wrong company. Your friend is the prophecy of your future. You smell at the company you keep. Be careful who you work with.
Show me your friend and I can predict what your life will look like. Because you look like what you look at. Be careful. Be careful who walks with you. Be careful who you walk with. Be very careful. You look like what you look at. You look like what you look at. You smell like the company you keep. I don't work with my mates. They don't have what it takes to take me to the next level. I work with my seniors. I work with people that know better than I do. I meet them in their books. I listen to their tapes. I'm on the internet self-developing. Work with your seniors. Every relationship will be tried. But don't say because of one misunderstanding. That's it. I shut it down. I don't want to know. Learn. Change. And move on. And in case you are here, you are not born again. The beginning of reigning is with the Lord Jesus Christ. You must give your heart to him. And let your name be written in the book of life. And let him save you. I believe in you, youth. I believe in you, young people. I believe that where we stop would be your starting point. I believe that no devil can stop you. I believe that one day we will have people like you in politics, in business, in ministry, reshaping the course of this world before Jesus comes. I love you all and the Lord bless you. <laughs> Sir, please pray. He said that destinies will be transformed. Am I correct? Who still wants to be like Mommy Adejumo now? How many of you still want to be like her? When she downloaded her past, all you see is the glamour, and so you want to be like her. Now she told you just a bit of the past. Do you still want to go with her? Yes, yes, praise the Lord. Let's celebrate God and thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So, my, you saw I was also taking notes. I was blessed. Thank you very much. We were all right. Please be seated. So tonight, um, we know that some of the men are not going to be around tomorrow. Thank you, mommy, for the privilege, for the questions. Just two. My mommy has said only two. Only two questions. Pastor Yemi has the questions in his hand. Sorry. Can we have it, please? No, we have, we have only two. Yes? She will choose. The first question, ma. Obey thy parents so thy days may be long. Yes. Must we obey all the directions of our parents? The second one. Is it all right to marry a man you earn more than? Please advise. How can I be approved by the Lord to be a king to do his will? When in the right time, it is only patience. Is it allowed for my wife to look bad in dressing in the name of born again? And the last one, Ma. How do you know when you have found Esther that's as a wife? Thank you. Mm. Obey your parents in, all, in the Lord. He says, honor thy father and mother. Then he says, obey thy parents in the Lord. Let God be pleased no matter who is offended. For instance, if your mother says you should be married to a man that is married, you're born again, so you know nature de teaches decency. You can't say you want to obey your parents and then dishonor God. That's not what I'm saying. I was talking about honor. I was talking about cutting the phone on your parents, walking out on them, shouting at them. That's what I was talking about. When you want to obey, when it comes to obedience, it is the Bible 
that guides our lives. But even when you want to disobey your parents or people that have authority over you, there is a way you do it. You don't just ease and say, nonsense, I'm not. No, no, no. You explain to them. The Bible says, entreat an elder, rebuke not an elder. You explain. Or you send people, you meet your pastor and say, sir, can you talk to my mommy? You know. So God must see that there is honor in the process of your disobeying your parents. Should my wife look bad in the name of born again? Of course, I balanced it. I talked about the beret and I talked about the skim skim, you know, dresses. So, no, she should look good, but she must honor God. That's very important. Should my wife, can my wife, from, of course, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, that's how we will know you are a submissive wife. Just don't flaunt it. And don't use it against the man. And I want to encourage the man to you to once your wife starts earning more than you, it's a wake up call. You to go and start something. Go on, join Uber. Ah, just try something. Let the woman know that you two, you are, you know. My husband is in full time ministry, but he's also a full time business person. As I stand before you, if you see me on the farm, you won't believe it's the same from Kefili Sadejum. In my jeans, peeling maize and corn, acres of land. Because I don't want to steal church money. My husband and I, we're in business. We sell fertilizer. I sell palm oil, as you see me like this. Apart from my books that give me money every, you know. So, do something. There's dignity in labor. Once you don't steal, it's fine. So, please, once your wife starts, in fact, before your wife starts earning more than you, you better run and do something. <laughs> How do you know when you find your Esther? Let's welcome that idea. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> she told us that when you find your Esther, your Esther must be willing to go far with you. Now, the person who said, if your wife at the moment is earning more than yourself, who says your husband will never, that her world has come to an end, that she will never become someone in life? It's just at this moment, you're just looking, you're only looking at your husband at this very moment. You do not know what he would become tomorrow. And you do not know what God will transform him to become. So my brothers and my sister, don't be carried away with what you see now. And then for my, for my hallelujah. And like she said for my brother, don't also sit down and, and, you know, feel that you have come to the end of yourself. Stand up, walk on yourself and get more things to do so that today the story will be you turn to your wife. Yesterday you were earning more than me. Today, you see, you know, I'm, I'm steps ahead of you. And both of us can live very, very comfortable lives. Praise the Lord. Don't be limited by what you see today. Tomorrow will be better than tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. How would you say? Now, what else can I say? If you look at my wife, she's, a, she's my Esther. Like Mommy, uh, Mommy Adechimo said, we have three kids. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and we've been married for how many years? <laughs> Hallelujah. For 34 years. Hallelujah. And then let me not go through the story. At the first moment, I, and I'm grateful to God because um, when I was in the University of Ibadan, you know, we started uh, the relationship in, in the Loring, you know, when I was in school of basic study. Then I didn't know much, but you know, you know, she, she was a nurse then. She was a practicing nurse. I was still a student and all that. And then I got to University of Ibadan. I saw a lot of girls who were prettier than her, you know. And I sent words to her. Excuse me, I made a mistake. But you know, rather than give it back to me, she picked up a fast. She did fast for one week dry fast and said this man you know you're not going anywhere 
<laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And then all of a sudden, you know, I came to my senses. And I returned home. So I'm grateful that she is my Esther. If, if, if I had, if she didn't do what she did, led by God to do what she did, of course, we, I may not have married her. I would have married a doctor, an engineer. My life will be hell. I may not be in ministry. I may not do the things that I enjoy doing. And thank God I found my Esther. Praise the Lord. How many of us are blessed today? Wow. How many of us, how many, how many people want us to come back next week? No, tomorrow is for women now. This is youth session. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the youth, young adult and the youth. Do we want, you do want us to come back next month? Or next week? We can pray. When we pray, God will answer. You understand? Praise the Lord. So I just have one assignment here. But mommy, please, can I... Because there's something in the heart of all the youths. In UAE, many don't know when to step up to marry. Because of the job, some, the, their job has occupied the time so much they don't have time to mix. And before they will think of when is marriage, age has gone. Then they are pushed to the wall. Then, it be, you know, there's a time when marriage is, is coming. There's a time when marriage is it's time. There's time when it becomes it's getting late. And then it becomes it is too late. Then people end up marrying anyhow. And some because, so it's a very big challenge both for male and for female. Some are here now. They have to take off from their work so that they will not be paid for today to be here. They work 12 hours, some 16 hours every day without off. Now, if they continue on this for five years, they're not most likely not going to see any suit, any suitor. Please, can you help us? Just one advice. No, ma, please. We want you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us there's a time for everything. Sometimes we misplace our priorities, thinking that I must have a three bedroom apartment. I must have two cars. I must have, I must have. It is better you both start small and grow together. If you don't get married, for instance, at the age of, until you are 47, when will you start having kids? Then by the time those children are old enough to take care of you, you are too old to even enjoy the air-conditioned cars. So this is a wake-up call. The system, is not just here in Dubai. It's everywhere. The system I even think Africa is a bit better because we live a communal life. America or England, you know now, you may not even see for three days because you have to do four jobs. I think we need to start changing our orientation and understand that you don't need to wait till you have everything before you get married. And after every wedding comes a marriage. So, you need to understand that it's not that you must have a society wedding and all that. And I'm sure that with this that you have said, um, the authority of the church too, and even the youths, you will organize maybe once in six months. Mix, and what do you call it? It's not blind date, too, but you know, let's even go out. It's not that men sit apart, women sit apart. Together, sit, mix, you know. Singles, summit, and all that. In fact, the last one I had, I told them after I've finished preaching, nobody should leave. Start mixing. It's my responsibility as your pastor. Look, look, look at that fine girl. Look at that direction now. You to look. If you want, if you don't want to look, we will help you to look. So after the service tonight, if you are single, wait and mix. If you don't marry from church, where will you marry from? And I'm talking to those of you brothers. Some of you brothers. Uh-uh. See, five, five guests here, and you won't look. 
You just come to a church, you put your text Bible under your armpit and you are going. <laughs> I beg. Shine your eyes, Joe. If you are a single brother, stand up. Hello? If you are a single brother, please be upstanding. Be upstanding. God bless you. Amen. Now, please listen, everybody. Listen. These guys are cute. My God. Please remain standing. Remain standing. I want to bless you. Now, those of you that are standing, if you are in a very serious relationship, you are ready, you have your wedding date, sit down. I want to pray with you. Okay, now listen, I want to pray for the singles. If you are a single lady, it's not that you have a wedding date in view or you are not in any serious relationship, please stand up. Now, look back, look around just look. Why are you laughing? Just look. See five, five guests now. See them. Okay, now I want to pray with you. Some of you are videotaping so that you will, you will replay and say, is that? <laughs> Raise your right hand to heaven. You will not miss it in marriage. The Lord will establish you. He will do you good. The enemy will not succeed in wasting your time. Amen. The God of heaven that rewrites history, the God that gives speed, will visit you. Amen. Some of you have been serving and serving, and it's your desire to be settled and to be established. I ask that heaven will orchestrate something tonight Amen. that will lead to your settlement. Amen. It is done. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look again, look again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. This year you will suffer no loss. Yeah. Yeah. TV, RCC, TV channel.